So if you guys missed the first video of this, I'll put a link in the description or after the, this video of the very first revealing of this bike, first time we, we saw it. And uh, through discussions with some people, uh, it has been named the holy grail of the old school KDXs. This is an 84 Kawasaki KDX 200. We first got it, we thought it was an 87 because we didn't know any better. And the tag down there actually says, this 1984 motorcycle, blah, 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 blah. And we've actually learned a whole lot about the KDX lineup since, here we go, since we bought this bike. We paid $275 for this thing and it's a first kick bike. It literally starts first kick every single time. Just to show you guys, it is a first kick bike. We'll give it a shot. I have faith in the Holy Grail. I was wondering why, so <laughs> that's why this, this bike is going to be named the Holy Grail. This is it. So for 275 bucks, um, we literally got a first kick bike. So what we're going to do in this video is something we haven't done that we didn't do in the other one because uh, we just wanted to see if we could actually start it for as cheap as it was. We're going to do a walk around on the bike. We've already obviously taken the plastics off the tank and everything and uh, show you all just exactly what we're working with. We're going to scope the jug to see what the piston looks like and the, the uh, jug itself internally. We're going to take the air filter off and see what the air filter looks like. From what I was told, this bike has been sitting for five years. The guy said his buddy had it uh, sitting under a lean-to uh, for a couple years and he had it sitting in his garage for a few more years after that. They weren't into dirt bikes. He just got into a trade. Got it in a trade, and uh, really didn't want to mess with it. He knew it was sitting so long, and it needed some kind of work to get it uh, running again. So in the previous video, all we did was pulled the carburetor off, which looked really clean, and we scrubbed out the jets, put it back together, and it fires and idles and runs. I haven't actually taken the motor apart. But running through the gears, uh, pushing the sprocket around and all that stuff, it, it runs through them clean. Nothing's locked up, nothing skips, nothing misses or anything. So we have high hopes for the holy grail of the KDX 200 series. We actually do have a headlight. We will get a bulb for it. The headlight is over there on the workbench. Um, we're going to put that back in. I'm debating on whether I want to clean the plastics up. Because they are, I mean, they're old, look at them. I would like to clean them up and do a few videos on how to get all this old sun-kissed stuff off of it. But I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that because I've never done it before. But I figured to make a video of it and uh, try and give it a shot. The pipe looks like it's in really good condition. And again, you can still see the words on it. I mean, this thing is in immaculate shape for as old as it is uh the frame still has the original sticker on it and i know you can't read it but that's the uh the other sticker that says it's an 84 plus there's other things uh to tell it's an 84. one thing we did notice when we pulled the carburetor off was the boot is it's cracked and dry rot it so we will on another video uh i'll do a replacement of this and i don't know if we'll do another car clean or not video of that uh area we also want to check the reeds and possibly replace replace them if this is in any kind of shape like the rest of the bike we probably won't have to touch it so just some surface rust we're going to clean that up we'll probably sand it down a little bit the muffler I mean look, you can still read <laughs> uh, from 1984 you can still read it that's that's pretty good the tires 
are in good shape, although, I mean, it's been sitting, so we are gonna replace them. This thing is, it hasn't been ridden at all. Look, I mean, it's just, jeez. The rear brake does grab a little bit. So we will be replacing the rear brake drum assembly and the brakes inside and all that. We have chain sprockets, obviously, that's uh, something that's kind of a given we're gonna do. The rear shock, I'm not sure if we're gonna rebuild this or not. These things are really cool because that's an air nozzle. So you can pump air into it just like the front forks and uh, adjust the compression on it. I don't think they have a rebound for it. I think it's just uh, the compression. I have to look a little bit more into these, these new Unitrack shocks. This was like top of the line thing. Everybody loved it when Kawasaki came out with this on their KDX line. So we're gonna look more into that. The electronics, they don't work. Like this, this does not come on for some reason. And this is actually to track your lap times uh, when you're out running a hair scramble or an enduro or something like that. Because this was a trail bike, this wasn't made for motocross. So these actually on the 84s, they didn't work that well. Sometimes after like a two, three hour long race, they were about 10 seconds off overall. But we'll uh, we'll get to this. We'll we'll try and learn about the electronics and all that once we get there. Enduro engineering bark busters on it. I did clean this up a little bit. It did not look this shiny. Trust me. <laughs> the forks look okay. I guess that we haven't ridden this thing yet, so we're not really sure about it. We did a little buff job on this. We're gonna take the forks off and really clean them up. That's what it looked like before. We're gonna buff them out and get them all nice and shiny. Same thing with the tires and rims. Front tire, it's the same as the rear. The thing looks immaculate. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. In the previous video, I actually broke the kickstand off of it. I think just because it was sitting so long on it. So what I did, I pulled it off where it broke. Uh, yep, you can see it broke right in here. Welded that together, uh, painted it. I actually cleaned the entire thing, painted it and all that stuff, and it's good to go. It kind of sticks out a little far for my taste. I might have to modify that a little bit to push it back in some, but that is, uh, that's okay. That ain't a big deal. Everything else looks pretty good. There was a couple couple pine needles in there, but overall it's, it's okay. All the plastics and everything came off, even though all the, the bolts and screws look like that. They look rusted. Uh, they broke free and they came off literally no problem. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull the spark plug out and take the bore scope shove her down in there and see what that piston and the jug looks like without tearing it all apart. The bore scope, rarely used, is essential for something like this because it saves a lot of time and work. So again, we literally did absolutely nothing to this bike and was told it was sitting for five years. So that's, uh, that's normal. That's from fuel running it like we did. Spark plug looks, looks really good. Um, Now, we get the borescope, shove it down in there, see what we can find. This is gonna be kind of difficult, holding uh, <laughs> holding yeah. the camera and <laughs> the scope. Maybe we can set the scope to the side a little bit. There's that, I don't know. Let's try and push that piston back some. This is gonna be kind of hard for everyone to see, but I'm not seeing any carbon buildup. 
literally looks like it hasn't been uh, used. Lighting right. There's really there's no really no build up on it. Um, <laughs> which is is a huge plus for us. So I'm gonna adjust the light a little bit. So it kind of looks like the top end uh, is new, like really new, like uh, maybe just an hour or two or three old. Uh, it's proven extremely difficult for us to use the bore scope and the GoPro at the same time. So we're gonna put the plug back in here. And we'll, we'll look at the jug a little later. Maybe we can get some assistance with the camera and uh, see if we can't see what the actual jug looks like but to my surprise that uh, that piston definitely looks extremely new like uh, barely ridden at all because usually you have carbon build up carbon deposits on it there'll be a black area where the spark ignites you know a little explosion area uh, that's that's pretty cool. That's that's uh, one step closer to the Holy Grail. <laughs> so now we'll take the air box off. I get down in here. Check the air filter. Now again. This thing, the guy said it's been sitting for about five years. Um, I'm gonna assume the air filter is probably just junk. I mean, it's probably gonna be frayed and uh, nasty, terrible. But the rest of the bike has surprised us. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Okay, so. That looks uh, brand new also. I may be missing something here. Maybe it's got oil on it. Honestly, I have no idea what to say right now. So <laughs> I really don't. We're gonna pull this off. Uh, we, act we do have another air filter coming for it. Just because like I, I'm, I want to do the basic maintenance for the bike. So obviously an air filter is high on the priority list when you get a bike that supposedly had set for five years. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, it's kind of, you can tell it's old. It feels old and kind of dried, but Jesus, look at that thing. That, it doesn't even have a, like a, a ride on it. I mean, okay, let's continue. So one thing I always do with my air filters, and a lot of people that race do this, uh, they'll put a liner inside the filter. I, I usually use a, a thick based grease. The grease just helps seal around the actual uh, seal of the air filter and it keeps everything out of it. So the air filters, they come pre-oiled. The ones that I get usually come pre-oiled. So uh, what we do to add to the longevity of that and to help uh, prevent problems with the carburetor, problems with the reed or the head or the, the motor essentially is I'll put a layer of grease or something around the base for, for a better seal. So this, this is gonna be a selling point for me. <laughs> if this thing has been taken care of, it's gonna have some kind of a seal around it. I don't really expect to see one because uh, most of the bikes that I encounter, that I get, 
they, they're they're just kind of trash so we fix them up and we sell them or even friends bikes are not in that great of a shape so i put the seal around them you know just just an extra thing and tell them about it so they can do it later on It's it's kind of greasy. It's coming off. You can tell that's that's been there for a long time. It's just kind of just flaking off, right? We have to replace that. This <laughs> this is what I was talking about. You see that right there? That clear part. Somebody sealed this thing up so they knew what they were doing they were taking care of this bitch because you can see the actual air filter right there the additive seal is that it's like a thin layer of grease i'm not going to put this back on because it's just uh, an extra cover that's going in the trash we have another one coming i'm going to assume the reeds are okay, but again, I want to pull them out just to see. And uh, this just clarifies what <laughs> we have been told. We have literally found the holy grail of the KDX 200 vintage lineup. This thing is in immaculate shape. And uh, fortunately for us, it was only 275 bucks. So we'll put probably I don't know, five to 800 bucks into it, depending on how much I really want to spend. Um, and be able to ride, we can ride it right now, uh, but I want to try and figure out the plastics. Um, I, I wanted to put a new piston in it, but seeing as the piston looks as great as it does, I'm gonna do a little more uh, bore scoping to it just to see and kind of really get in there and look around the, the jug and all that to see if uh, we want to pull this all apart and maybe rehome it uh, or rehone it and put a new piston in it or not. I'm probably just going to leave it the way it is for right now. Something else we want to do is I got to drain the oil out of it. We want to replace the oil. We're going to use Motul 10W40. Uh, again, if we're gonna rebuild this thing, we're gonna do it right, so I'm gonna use nothing but quality high-end parts and oil for it. Again, uh, we're gonna use Formula K2 instead of other kind of pre-mix or whatever for it because that's what I used in my race bike, the KTM. If you guys follow the channel, you know that's what we used and that's uh, very high quality performance stuff we're gonna use in this also. I'm kind of tempted to strip the whole thing down <laughs> and paint the frame or at least clean the, the frame up because it's and something that, that has that is in this good of shape uh you want to continue to take care of it so the rundown what we are going to do we're going to get a uh, dry erase board set up and i'm going to go through this entire thing do not a complete not a complete restoration but something that's gonna get this thing in really good working order in really good shape and somewhere we could sell it for a lot more than what we paid for <laughs> um, we have no plans on selling this thing you know right now so far it's just gonna be something to fun that's uh, fun to, to mess around with to get back running and uh, back out there you know something to, to give it another breath of life which uh, these old bikes that, that, that's that's what they need Especially these 200s. That's, <laughs> these things are amazing. And we have chain, sprockets, rear brakes, air filter. Uh, we, we have basically the general maintenance stuff on the way. And we're going to do a, a video of that stuff as well. Not sure about the boot. Again, you know, we may replace it, we may not. Uh, it really depends on what it looks like or how, how it sounds and how it feels once we get out there and actually ride it. I'm interested in uh, really learning how the forks and uh, the suspension setup works with air pressure. Never done that before. It's always been oil, you know. Uh, 
preload, rebound, all that stuff. So it's going to be exciting to learn about. Uh, we have a new pet cop coming for the gas tank. And I'm not sure if we're going to buy new pla plastics for it, uh, replica plastics or whatever, or if we're going to try and fix up the originals for it. I'm pretty sure they're original plastics. So <laughs> I don't want to get rid of them. I don't want to throw them away. And I also don't want to mess them up by trying to clean them up. So we're going to uh, reach out to a few people and see what we should do about that also. But so far, this thing is uh, the holy grail, <laughs> the KDX 200. And we obviously are going to have to get new tires for it, uh, new tubes and all that stuff, and we will. We'll do a video on that too. We'll replace the fork boots and all that stuff. We'll clean the forks up because there is some surface rust on them. You guys can see that right there. And we have degreaser for the motor. We're, we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun with this thing. I mean, we're we're having fun with it now, but the most fun is gonna be getting it out and actually riding this thing. So between working on it. Uh, updating it and all that stuff. We're gonna take it out and ride it. We're not gonna leave it sitting here on the stand uh, in the number one spot in the garage because we have all these other bikes and other uh, exciting adventures to have. We can't leave this amazingly awesome running bike, the Holy Grail KDX 200s, just sitting because it's, it's ready. It wants to stretch its legs. It wants to get out in some trails and get muddy and dirty and have a good time. And that's what we're gonna do with it. So don't think all these videos are just gonna be like this of <laughs> me talking and, <laughs> and you guys just looking at the bike, you know, all in pieces. We're gonna uh, do some work to it and we're gonna get it out and we're gonna ride it. And we're gonna do some more, more work to it, get out and ride it. You know, it'd be a lot of back and forth thing. But we are gonna uh, have a, a list set up on one of the tool chests, maybe the, the new red one in the back, probably on the side or something, of uh, dry race boards, literally putting down everything we bought for it and uh, how much it's, it's really gonna cost overall um, through this entire project. So we'll have video updates on that as well and uh, really get in depth with this bike because the more I'm learning about these things, the more excited I'm getting about them. And the more I, in depth I look at this bike, the more excited I get about it because it's, it's in amazing condition, especially for $275. So <laughs> make sure you hit the like button and subscribe down below. Uh, there should be a video around here in one of these squares of us getting this bike off the truck and pulling it in and starting it the first time. And uh, I think maybe with the, pla I don't want to ruin the original plastics. They're right over there uh, with putting any kind of numbers or anything on them. So I may do aftermarket set of plastic just for the video series or just for, for us riding this bike and have the Holy Grail put on it uh, with some graphics and all that stuff. I'm not sure yet, but <laughs> That's a, that's a goal. If you like that idea, uh, give me a thumbs up or, or let me know what kind of graphics you like you would like to see on the bike. Um, I'm open to all different kinds of ideas. I don't mind, um, I'm you know doing some kind of really cool stuff. I do want to save the original stuff though. So that, that will be packaged up and be put off to the side and the aftermarket stuff will be put on it and then uh, taken off if we decide to sell it or if we want to take it somewhere or you know whatever. So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. Hit the like button and subscribe. Till next time, this is the Holy Grail of the KDX 200s.